everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About Today. If you're new here, my name is Brock and I've been working in the fish store for a long time and so I just like to do these videos where I basically will give an overview of fish, corals, inverts, water changes, everything just so people can have a good idea and a good foothold of what they're looking into. Today we have a coral this is all about mushrooms. We're going to learn a ton of stuff, so let's jump right into it. So mushrooms, they tend to break into four categories. There's the discosoma, the rhodactis, the recordia, and the pseudocornactis. So just to get the basics off, mushrooms tend to be a very good coral for beginners. They're very hardy. They don't need crazy lighting requirements. And the tank can even be a little dirty at times and they'll do fine. So the basics on mushrooms, just get us started. Prices on them, you'll normally spend, frags can be as cheap as like $10, but then you'll see crazy colors upwards in the triple digits of trying to buy these mushrooms. So they tend to be, if you're getting more of a cluster or crazier colors, the price on them is definitely going to go up. Care level, super easy. Pretty much all of the mushrooms we're going to go through today are very easy to take care of. A beginner wants these mushrooms and also the more experienced people want these mushrooms because they just look very good in a reef aquarium. Temperature you want to keep at 72 to 78, DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 8.4 and your salinity 1.020 to 1.025. Color, there is every color on the rainbow you can find in mushrooms. Some colors can tend to be a lot harder to find but I promise you if you're looking for a specific color that you want in your tank there is probably a mushroom out there that is that color. Diet, so mushrooms all feed on the light. They are major filter feeders and it's all they need to live. That's what makes them so easy, but you can also, to improve their health and color and also make them grow faster, they have a mouth in the very middle of them that will eat basically anything. You can feed them all kinds of stuff. Oyster feast is a really good one. Fuel any kind of powder that you mix up in your water and pour in there like reef roids they'll eat that stuff up too and they'll even eat like small frozen food like mysis and brine shrimp if you turn all your power heads off and let that float down to them they'll eat that too pellets are also a really good one that can float down to them and they'll grab those you can see them they'll basically turn into this cone to protect the food and keep it in them and then that way they can eat it and you'll notice them grow tremendously faster whenever you're actually feeding your mushrooms, but you don't have to because they will also feed and live just fine off the light. Origin, most mushrooms you're getting nowadays are aquacultured in different places, but where they came from was Indonesia and Australia and the Caribbean areas. Venomous, so yes, mushrooms will sting the fire out of corals. It's best to put them in places where they can grow and take over because any mushroom getting next to another coral will definitely sting it. There is a chance they can also sting you, but with your hands, there's no chance. The pores on your hands are going to be way too tight for them to actually sting you, so they would have to hit you somewhere like on the forearm where your pores are a lot more open for them to get you, so you shouldn't have to worry about them hurting you in the tank. Just make sure to be careful if you got a big cluster of them in your tank and you're going down to the bottom. Placement. Mushrooms tend to do better in the middle to lower areas, but mushrooms can go really anywhere. The main thing is the current. Current tends to be low to medium. A lot of times if you put it on high and there's too much current hitting them, they'll tend to shrink up and they won't open up super big. Mushrooms like to expand out really far. That way they can filter feed really good. And that's why it's also good to put them somewhere open because they can swell up really big. So if you notice they're staying small and they're staying closed up, it could mean you have too much current on them. There isn't also a chance if there's too much current on them and they do not like where they are, they can detach themselves and then they'll be floating around the tank and it can take a long time for a mushroom to actually grab onto a rock. Tank size, it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure your water levels are looking good and you've got a decent light on top that can help them out. With lighting, it does not require a lot. Most of the ones you're seeing in the video are up under Hydro 26s. It brings out their color the best, but I've seen them do just as well under those LED bars like the current USA ones. They'll grow just fine. Now, of course, you might get a better color out of them with 
those higher end LEDs in the Hydra 26, but you do not need these high, powerful, expensive lights to take care of mushrooms. And if you aren't sure if your lights can take care of them, just leave it down in the comments and I'll be able to let you know. Fragging mushrooms tends to be very easy. One of the best ways I've seen to do it is to have a standalone rock somewhere and put them on the top because whenever they do grow, they'll eventually start laying baby mushrooms up under them and you'll notice that original one will slowly start to move around that rock. That way the little mushrooms can start to get light and grow and then he can slowly move down and start laying more mushrooms. And now with my recordias, they actually move down the rock and eventually will end up on the sand bed and then I can just scoop them up and sell that one. And then the babies will basically just repeat that process of moving down, laying eggs, and then coming on the sand bed. There is also another way that we like to frag them is whenever they will stretch up towards the light and you'll be able to see their underside all the way down to the rock. Like in this picture right here, you can see how his underspot goes down and connects right to the rock. And if you were to cut him right as close as you could get to the rock, and you put him in the sand bed, he'll grab that sand and basically hold on to it and heal himself. And then, of course, you can glue him to a rock or put him somewhere else that you want him. I've also seen people online frag them where they will cut them perfectly in half at the mouth. Now, that's a little more risky for me. I'd rather not hurt the mushroom so much, but a lot of people will just cut them down the center and then they'll regrow having a mouth on each side so that they can still live. Mushrooms do take time to grab onto a piece of rock. They're not like anemones where you can just put a little pressure on them while they hold onto the rock and then let go in 15 seconds. Mushrooms can take weeks at times to grab onto rocks. That's why a lot of times it's good people will put them in the sand bed. That way they grab some sand quick and they'll be heavier so that they can put them on top of a rock. Or you can put a tiny piece of reef glue up under them and stick them to a rock. That way, they stay stationary and they can grab a hold of that rock eventually themselves and then they can move around the rock themselves. Now that's going to be your basic facts about them. Now getting more into the specifics of them, the first ones we're going to talk about is the Discosoma mushrooms. These are the most commonly seen ones with the biggest variety in colors. They're normally the cheapest too, so if you're looking for one that isn't so expensive and you're wanting a really cool color though, like the red ones we used to sell at our shop for $10 a head. So you could get a bunch of them and they would look really good in your tank. So more common, a little cheaper. I've seen other people that will even house them in tanks with angels and butterfly fish who would normally nip at other corals. We also used to keep a bunch of discosoma mushrooms in our predator tanks, like with puffers and triggers and eels running around, and they would never mess with them. Discosomas tend to have a more smooth body with a couple little bumps here and there, but for the most part, they're mostly flat. Now they can split also like anemones to grow, but for the most part, they're gonna grow by moving slowly around the rock and laying smaller mushrooms up under them. Now next is the Rhodactus mushrooms. These are also called furry mushrooms. Tongas and hairy mushrooms and elephant ears are probably the most popular ones that you'll see in the tank. Most of them will stay smaller, like the hairy mushrooms, they'll get probably two to three inches big, but then other ones like the elephant ears can be up to a foot long. They can get huge in tanks. Clownfish have been known to host these often. You can see videos online of them getting in the really big mushrooms. They'll just play in them like it's an anemone. It's very cool. And also what's so popular nowadays with these Rhodactus mushrooms is the bounce mushroom which has the very large bubbles growing on top of them that almost looks like an alien. It's crazy, and they can be very expensive. The next ones are the Recordias. Now, these are personally my favorite by far, especially because of the oranges and yellows you can get on them. They are very pretty, and they stand out. They have little bitty tiny bubbles going all across their skin, which can really catch the eye. There's two main versions of the Recordia. There's the Florida versions, which come more around the Caribbean. These typically stay smaller. They're getting just bigger than a quarter. While the Yumas, the Yuma version, which comes from Australia, these can get as big as your hand or bigger. They get huge, and they also grow a lot faster. The last ones are the Pseudocorinactus, which aren't seen very often. They're pretty rare, mainly because people just don't want them. 
They are a very predatory type mushroom. A lot of people see them as anemones because of their tentacles that grow around them. They are known to catch your smaller fish like your chromies and your wrasse, which nobody wants. And they are also have been seen as hitchhikers whenever people get a big live rock shipment in. They'll actually be on the rock. So not seen very often, but it is another type of mushroom out there to get. I know people that do take care of them, they'll be feeding them full silver sides and they'll eat those up like crazy. So that is your last mushroom. For the most part, you're going to see all kinds of mushrooms out there. Prices will definitely go up for the ones like the bounce mushrooms and the crazier colors like the pinks and reds. But hair level for all mushrooms is super easy. A beginner can take care of them. I hope you all learned a little something about mushrooms today. Remember the main ones are the Discosomas, the Rhodactus, the Recordias, and the Pseudocranactus. Those are your main four you're going to see out and about whenever you're shopping. If you have any more questions, please leave them down below. If you have any kind of tank care that you might not have mentioned or lighting requirements that you're wanting to know, if your tank can take care of them, please leave them down in the comments. I'll get right back to you. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. We have a ton of videos out there now. But just as a recap, mushrooms, a great beginner coral. They do not have to be in high-end reef aquariums. They do really good for people that are scared to take care of corals because these are very hardy and easy to take care of. They're going to feed off the lights. Placements can be anywhere in the tank. And current tends to be low to medium. That way they're filter feeding just fine. But other than that, I hope you all have a great day. Make sure to stay safe out there. And I will see y'all later. Thanks for tuning in.